Hey guys, welcome to the new F Stopper set. If you saw our last Critique the Community, you saw both Patrick and I sitting here. We've done a lot of work to get it to this point. And in today's video, I'm going to take you behind the scenes and show you what we've built. So you may have seen the introductory video where we showed you this big house that we're renting here in Puerto Rico. And if you can remember back, this room used to be the pool table room. It had a gigantic pool table and it was a lot of work moving it out of here, but with the help of a few movers, we actually did get it out of here, and then we had this empty space that we needed to work in. Once the pool table was out of the way, there was also this big hanging light that was just in the way with all of our lighting gear and everything, so we removed that as well. Once we got rid of the pool table and the light, we had an empty place to work in, but we needed furniture, and we've been waiting for West Elm to get around to delivering it. We finally got it, and we were able to put it in place. Now, one of the main issues that we ran into right off the bat was we have windows behind us and the sun beams right through those windows. And even though we have some really bright lights that we're working with here, we were not able to get a correct exposure or even close to an even exposure with those really blown out windows. So before we get into all the technical stuff and I show you all the lighting that we have, let's go to the back of this room and let me show you what I did to tame this natural light. What we decided to do was hang curtains along this. And then I put shears up in the middle because I still wanted the natural light. I wanted it to look like windows, but I wanted to get a little bit more of a correct exposure. You don't want the outside windows to be so blown out that it starts eating into your subjects or blooming around your subjects. But even this was still too bright. So come over here, Patrick, and take a look at this. So in here, you can see that we have taped up a scrim that you use with photography. This might be used in the front of a softbox or something, but this helps tame down the light even more. That's just how bright it is out there. And then with the shears in place, you can't tell that there's a softbox taped to the window, and that's enough for us to get a correct exposure. Now, you'll notice there are lights and microphones all over the place, but I think where we should go next is back to the beginning over here, and let me show you where I have everything plugged in. So for years, my dream has been to have a set that's just ready to go, and with the flip of a switch, everything comes alive, and you can immediately film. Otherwise, we have to tear down and build up every time before we want to shoot. So my first thought was, we need to get power on one power strip, and I want all of the lights plugged into one thing, and that's what we have right here on the ground. You can see if I hit this switch, everything's going to cut off here, including the monitor. This makes things super quick. When we wanna leave, we just cut everything off and then I can turn the button on and all of the lights come back on. Everything's perfectly dialed in, all the white balances are set and everything's perfect with just one switch. Now, we've got a GH5 recording here and I hate having to deal with batteries and everything. So we actually have an AC adapter going to this camera so that it can film forever. We never have to touch it, it's just ready to go. Now I'm going to go through all of the lights in just a second and tell you what each one of those does, but let's quickly talk about audio because that's something that's been very confusing and very complicated as well. And we have a few different options here. We're trying to figure out what the best plan of action is. First of all, you'll see that we have an XLR cable running right down by your feet, and it's going directly into this camera. This XLR cable, if you come right over here, it attaches to this Rode NTG8 shotgun microphone. Rode sent this over to us, and I love this mic. It's gigantic. It's really cumbersome, but it sounds so good and it's so directional. You can see how directional it is by, based on the link alone. Let me sit down, I'll show you how this sounds. I'm wearing a lav mic and that's actually being piped into the camera you're on right now. I'm wearing a lav mic and that's actually being piped into the camera you're on right now. Then I also am being recorded on the other camera directly from this microphone. Now, I could get this a little bit closer to me, but we have to watch out because it'll start entering the frame. Here's the thing that I found out about this microphone. I prefer it to the lav mic. I think it sounds better, especially if you can get it closer to the person's mouth that you're recording. However, in our test where we've had two shotgun mics going one to me and one over to Patrick, because we have to move them out of the frame so that they don't show up, we're actually getting a little bit better results with the lav mics only because the lav mics are so close to our mouths. It's like a few inches versus maybe three feet away on this. So I would love to be able to get the shotgun mics to work just so we don't have to worry about batteries and lav mics and everything. You can just sit down and instantly record. 
but we've been running into some problems. We may have to go back to the lav mics for this set. Any other time that we're gonna have one person, I'm definitely going to stick with the shotgun mic. Now, let's talk about the stand that it's on. We're using these stands almost exclusively, and I love these just because they're so versatile. They work as a normal light stand, or they work as a boom stand. This is the Manfrotto 420B. We have tons of these now, but you can see like this light over here is the exact same light stand, but it's in the light stand configuration, not the boom stand configuration. There's another one right behind it. Now, one thing I didn't mention is that this Rode mic is plugged in with a cable, and that's because we only happen to have one cable. We're waiting for a shipment from B&H right now. This is the Rode NTG3. It has a little bit wider of a field. It's not as good as the NTG8 for this type of thing. If, if your subject's not moving around, I have this hooked up with a wireless system. This is the Sennheiser G4, and I believe this is the EW G4, and this will turn any shotgun microphone into a wireless microphone. So I'm definitely excited to get more XLR cables so that I don't have to rely on batteries. You probably saw that we have a monitor set up here, and that's so that we can easily film ourselves without having to have a cameraman, and we can make sure that the camera's recording. You can see this going here. You can see audio levels down here. Make sure that you know everything's going right with that. Uh, this is something that I've always wanted. It just makes things so much easier, so I'm not having to look at the super small screen from across the room. So this has been really nice to have. Now, this blue blanket here is actually a sound blanket. It's just supposed to eat up some of the sound so that it doesn't go into this other room over here, bounce off the walls and create echo. And if you look behind you guys right here, I have another one hung up as well. I do have a bunch of sound blankets on the way that are white and black that are much bigger than these. I just only have two at the moment, so that's what we have to work with. Now behind the camera over here, we have the Rodecaster Pro. This is a new podcasting system, and I love the idea of this. We have not yet had a chance to use it just because we're still waiting on the cables. But the whole idea here is that you can have four different people on four different mics. You can have USB input, you can have a cell phone input so people could call into your show. You can also have Bluetooth input, and then you can have someone here listening and managing all of this. It also records and it will output the sound to a camera if you want it to. It also has all these pads that you can save music or sound effects to, and you can hit these while you're recording a podcast. I'm really excited to test this out. I'm sure I'm going to do a much longer review of this unit alone, but at the moment, we have not even turned it on yet. All right, let's talk about lighting. This is a light that we're simply using so that you can see me as I walk around the set, but this isn't really having much of an effect on the set, and we do not use this normally while we're filming. This light is the Felix Matrix 2 RGBW. Felix sent us over a couple of these and a few of their smaller units that we've talked about for years now. And I have to say, this light is incredible. Not only is this thing super bright, it also has color shiftability, but it also has tint shiftability as well. That's something that I didn't really realize was important until I have it with this. Literally right before we started filming this, we were shifting the main light to the magenta side to get some strange green cast that we can see on the walls in here out. And once you've used a light that can color shift and tint shift like this, you never wanna go back to a standard light. The other incredible thing about this light is it can create colors that are way beyond the spectrum. So if you wanna have like neon blues or orange or pinks or purples or whatever, this can do that as well. It also has all of the DMX controls. If you wanna have a control board so you can control this thing wirelessly or wired, it does that as well. And what's also really nice about this, even though it's gigantic, it can accept soft boxes as well. So we have a gigantic soft box right over here. So you can see we can put this thing onto it if we wanna soften up the light, but we find ourselves a lot bouncing the light off of the ceiling to get really soft light. When you've seen us on the other set, which is right over here, a lot of times what we're doing is just bouncing it right off the ceiling. We're getting that nice, beautiful soft light from above and it looks great. Some of the other lights that we've used, especially smaller LED lights, are not powerful enough to really do much when you bounce them into the ceiling. This one is. So let's talk about our key light. This is the exact same light here. It's a duplicate version. And what we have is a very small, kind of pop out softbox type thing. If you're familiar with our F-Stoppers flash disc, this is very similar. And basically it can 
shrink down into something super small. Pops out, has magnetic clips on it. And basically this gives you a slightly softer light, but not as soft as the giant softbox, obviously. It's kind of about the size of a beauty dish. And for this particular set, I think it looked really nice. Now, if you guys wanna see what our key light is doing, Patrick's gonna shut it off. So you can see we've lost a ton of light. So with the key light off, you can see that we have some other lights that are still throwing light around this room. Let me show you what those do. We have a second light right over here with a grid. Cut that off, Patrick. You can see now there's no light on me whatsoever. Let's check this light out. All right, so this is the Felix P360 Pro Plus. We've been talking about the P360 for a long time and they keep upgrading it. There was the Pro and now there's the Pro Plus. The Pro Plus also allows you to tent shift. We love this light because it's so small and because it accepts pro photo accessories. We almost exclusively shoot with pro photo strobes and so we've already invested in a ton of pro photo accessories. So I really like the fact that no matter if I'm shooting with strobe or with these hot lights, I can grab any one of our modifiers and they fit right on it. Right now what I have is a 20 degree grid and that is aiming the light directly at me. It's adding a little bit of contrast to me, but it's not going to hit Patrick or whoever else is in this second chair over here. All right, let me sit back down and show you what this light's doing. All right, let's turn both lights back on and then we'll cycle on and off this smaller light so that you can see what the contrast change is. So you can see it just adds a little bit of punch to my face. I think it brightens up the scene, makes it a little bit better. So I'm sure you've probably noticed there is a lamp on this desk here and it appears to be throwing light on this dresser behind the lamp, but that is actually not the case at all. You can see back here, we actually have a light behind the couch. Let's go check that out. All right, so back here we have another P360 Pro Plus. This time I have barn doors placed on this. It works a little bit differently than a grid because a grid will create a circular spot, whereas barn doors allows you to really close in the sides or maybe close in one side and leave the other side open. What I'm trying to do here is just get a nice highlight on this dresser. This dresser is really dark and so it was kind of falling into shadow in this scene. So as you can see, if I cover up this light, it really goes dark. And another nice thing is having this monitor up here, I've been able to place all of these lights very specifically without having somebody behind the camera telling me how to move it. I can see the monitor from here. It makes things a lot easier. Now, finally, we have one other light and that is once again, another P360 Pro Plus. This one also has barn doors on it and this light is doing two different things. So the first thing that it's doing is it's casting some light across these panels here. And although with our current framing, you can't really see this set of panels. Once we film with more people in the scene, if we have three or four people, we're going to have to shoot a little bit wider and you will see all of this. Again, this was just kind of falling in shadow here. And so I think it looks nice having some angular light come across these panels. And then I've opened up this side and it adds a little bit of a hair light on me. Again, I've closed this side down because I don't want it casting a shadow of this on the wall back here. And I don't want it hitting Patrick in the face, but you can see if I sit down, it does create a nice little highlight on my shoulder. So you can see Patrick flipping it on and off here. Not a huge change, but I think every little thing helps. And because these lights can color shift, I've made our key lights a little bit cooler than these background lights, which I've made a little bit more red. I think the color contrast brings out the depth of the scene a little bit more. Now, one other thing that I haven't mentioned is the carpet down here. Obviously, you can't see much of it, so it may seem like a waste to you, but really the carpet is probably doing the most to eat into all of that echo that we have in this room. The second we put the carpet down, it got so much more quiet in here and it was a lot better for a recording. Now, one other thing to consider if you're going to be using windows in your scene like we are, is whether or not you're gonna be filming at night. We haven't filmed a video at night yet, but I have done tests and I think it still looks good. It's not quite as interesting, but I think the background light that I've placed that skirts across all of the curtains really brings the scene alive. If you don't have that and you don't have the light coming from the background from the natural sunlight, I think it gets really boring in the background. Now, there are a few things that we still need to do to this set. First of all, this lamp's a little weird. I feel like we should have some books here or something. Some people have said the lamp is distracting, so I don't know if we're gonna get rid of the lamp or find another lamp. 
The other thing that I'm not a huge fan of, really anywhere in this house, is that every single wall in this house is painted yellow. I don't really like yellow, but because we're renting the house, I don't wanna repaint the walls in the house. We have a lot of different backgrounds currently on the way. We have hand-painted backgrounds that I think could look really nice back there. We also have some flat paper backgrounds that we could easily tape up there, but it's gonna be a little bit until we actually receive those, so we haven't been able to test them yet. There's also still some echo that I can hear, but listening very closely to my voice, I can tell that my voice is going completely out of this room into the next room and then bouncing back. I think once we add a little bit more furniture into the other room and if we hang up some more sound blankets, I think it'll be pretty quiet in here. And I know in a previous video I said that I might be adding some foam up to the ceiling. I don't know that that's totally necessary anymore. I feel like having the furniture in here and especially having this rug in here has done a really good job to mitigate all of that noise. So this is probably getting a little bit more complicated than the average viewer of an F-Stoppers video would be uh, doing themselves, but I feel like a lot of photographers today are building more and more intricate sets, if not for video, then just for their photography. And also a lot of photographers are starting to move over into hot lights rather than strobes. It makes it much easier to see what you're doing when you're setting everything up. And it makes it a lot easier to flip over and shoot video clips, even if you're hired just for still photos. So we have a lot more work to do, especially with a lot of the gear that you've quickly seen in this video. We're gonna be doing much more in-depth reviews, but we wanted to use all this gear for a while, really get to know it before we did our final review. So stay tuned for that if you'd like to learn more about each piece of gear. If you'd like more daily free content, head over to fstoppers.com and head over to fstoppers.com slash store if you'd like to check out our full length photography tutorials.